it's now Friday in Holy Week. Good Friday, we call it in the church. And a lot has happened since we left Jesus yesterday at that Last Supper with his disciples. A lot has happened in these hours. I'd like to share with you some words that have been written by the Iona Community Wild Goose Worship Group that just speak about these last hours since we left Jesus yesterday. They went out and followed him, those who had sat with him at the table. He led them to a garden where he prayed while they slept. He prayed while they slept. He was kissed and because he was kissed he was arrested. And when he was arrested, his friends fled, some to go into hiding, one to stand beside a bonfire and say, I never knew him. I never knew him until a cock crowed. He was brought before the religious authorities and accused of the sin of blasphemy and of threatening insurrection. Having no power to deal with him, they handed him over to the state governor, who listened to the accusations and then asked the accused, what have you to say? What have you to say? To which the response was silence, because he had said it all. He was not found to be guilty of any criminal charges, but because he was an embarrassment, it was decided that his own people should determine his fate. This they did by shouting, crucify him, crucify him. He was cursed and spat on, whipped and humiliated, and on his shoulders a gift was placed, which he accepted with grace. Under the weight of this gift, he stumbled and fell. He stumbled and fell all the way to Calvary. On top of a rubbish dump, he was nailed to a cross of wood and left to die. While soldiers gambled, critics joked, Religious leaders smiled with satisfaction and his mother watched and waited. She watched and waited. At him, O oh love, how deep, how broad, how high.
tell you a story. Now, this is one of these stories that is allegedly true, but then you think, mm, maybe it's not true. But it doesn't really matter whether the story is true or not. It just says something about how we feel on Good Friday. So I want you to imagine you're going away back to the 1930s. And there's a man called John Griffiths, and his job is to control one of the bridges that goes across the Mississippi River. So obviously, when the ships are coming up, he's got to make the bridge go up so that the boats can go underneath the bridge. But it's a railway bridge. And so when the trains come, his job is to lower the bridge, obviously so that the trains can get over the bridge safely. Now, John and his wife had a little boy. Let's say he's about eight or nine years old. And you know what we boys are like? One of the things they love to do is copy what the adults do. And one of the things this wee boy liked to do was go to work with his dad. If it wasn't a school day, he could go to work with his dad and he could watch as his dad let the boats go through and then let the trains come over the river as well. So one particular day, the wee boy went with his dad and he watched in the morning as the bridge was lowered and the bridge went up and he watched the ships go under and he watched the trains go over. And then it came to lunchtime and the two of them went for a wee picnic. And they had a wee sit down and they had their lunch. But obviously they just caught, kind of got distracted. And as the time went on, John realised that it was time for one of the, the trains to come back over the bridge. And he thought to save time, he would leave the wee boy where he was and he would go back up to the control room so that he could control the bridge. But what he didn't realise at that time was that the wee boy tried to follow him up to the control room. And as the wee boy was going up to the control room, he slipped and he fell. And he fell into the mechanism of the bridge. He slipped between two of the gears that had to be moved to bring the bridge down. And so as the dad stood in the control room and suddenly realised that that's what had happened to his wee boy, he had a split second decision to make. Either he could lower the bridge and kill the child, or he could go and save the child, in which case the whole train load of people would drown in the river. What was he to do? And so he made that agonising decision to crush the boy in the mechanism of the bridge in order to save the people who were in the train coming over the bridge. And the story ends with him looking at that train as it came over the bridge and looking at the people in that train for whom he had sacrificed his son and realising that they were completely oblivious to what had happened. They just did what they would normally do. They were reading their paper on the train, they were playing games, some were eating and some were drinking, but they were oblivious to the sacrifice that he had made on their behalf. I'm sure you know why I'm telling you that story, because Good Friday is an important day for us in the Christian church. But a lot of people, they're a bit like the folk in the train. It's just another day and they're completely oblivious to the sacrifice that was made by God on our behalf. So I hope and pray on this Good Friday, we are not like the people in the train. We take time. We take stock. We think about what happened on this day. And we give thanks to God. Let me share with you the passage as it's set out to us in the Gospel according to St Mark. He says, a certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him. Dividing up his clothes, they cast lots to see what each would get. It was the third hour when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, Come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, 
but he can't save himself. Let this Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. At the sixth hour, darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried it and out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sababathani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling for Elijah. One man ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a stick and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. Let us pray. Gracious God, we praise you for the astonishing love we remember today. The love that you showed to all of humankind through your coming, living and dying among us in Christ. We thank you for being willing to endure so much for our sakes that Jesus faced the mental agony, the physical torture and the spiritual torment involved in the cross. But above all, God, we praise you that you did all of that through a person as human as we are. Someone who experienced the same temptations, was torn by the same fears, sharing the same joys and sorrows. And so we thank you for the assurance that that brings, the knowledge that you understand us, you understand all the trials and tribulations that we are going through each day. You understand our worries, our concerns and our doubts. We thank you for the inspiration this brings, for the example of Christ of humanity at its most selfless, courageous and compassionate. And yet we recognise the challenge that this brings to all of us, the call to follow in his footsteps, to take up our cross to deny ourselves and to offer our service. Gracious God, you became human, flesh and blood like us. Accept our praise and receive our thanksgiving through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. How deep the Father's love for us.
And now may the God of grace breathe health into your body, love into your heart, peace into your mind and joy into your spirit. And may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Please join us on Sunday as we celebrate, celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, 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 oh.